Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about agentic AI governance. It's not a new topic. I mean, when you talk about governance, uh, we have been, you know, seeing or we have seen previously AI governance, right? Uh, this video is not for beginners, to be honest. This video is for more, you know, for leaders or thought leaders or somebody, you know, within an enterprise or somebody who is doing, you know, their own startups and they understand this technology a bit, uh, then they'll be able to figure out what do we mean by governance, right? Governance is really important when it comes to scaling your solution or a business also, I'll say. You know, let's say you want to you know, do a project for a very big company. Uh, if you don't have a governance strategy in place, they will not work with you, right? So we're gonna talk about agentic AI governance, a bit different than AI governance, okay, because you know, we are going to talk about uh, different things that we need when we talk about agentic AI. It's not uh, very similar to traditional AI and machine learning, right, that we used to do years ago. Now, uh, this is important because Gartner has come up with a recent study saying that 40% of agentic AI projects will be cancelled by 2027. Right. And they have basically said three things. If you see here on my screen, they have talked about unclear business value because a lot of leaders are not, uh, you know, not able to figure out what's the business value that they're going to get after implementing uh, AI agents based projects in their company. Right. Like, let's say a very big services company. They have a COE center of excellence. And, you know, they, they decided, okay, we want to, like, let's say, build a platform uh, for all their developers, right, internally. Uh, and But they don't have a strategy in place on how to find out the business value. That should be either, there should be a framework or a methodology to decide that. You cannot just talk gas saying that, okay, let's say productivity gain is a metric to, you know, to decide. It is, but then you have to go a deep dive into productivity gain and measure based on the use cases. So unclear business value is really something that is, you know, that is troubling a lot of leaders right now. And that's why uh, it has operational cost as a challenge also, right? It's because let's say you were using AI agents, there are multiple agents that are working together. There are token cost, there is infrastructure cost, there is uh, ops cost, there is also human resources cost, so on and so forth, right? So operational cost, okay, uh, let's say. And the third one is risk. And risk is a major thing because we have seen previously like on a lot of use cases that if there is no risk management framework in place, you know, uh, it might not scale, right, within an enterprise. So there are challenges, not only Gartner, we have been seeing it, right, that we are building POCs, but after POCs, the projects are not being implemented in a, like, let's say, a, a, a company-wise rollout. We do a POC, we build, like, let's say, a rag or a chatbot or, you know, try something on documents and so on and so forth. And then after a few months, we stop using it because it's not able to create any kind of value. So... To solve all of these problems, you need governance, okay? And governance is also important on the other side, like let's say investment. Uh, if your company don't have governance layer, you know, the, of course, it depends on investors, but good investors will never invest if they don't have, I'm talking about not investment coming for startups. I'm talking about enterprises. Startup is a different story, right? It depends on your execution strategy, your team strength, founders' background, so on and so forth. But in an enterprise, you have partners, you have you know uh, investors. They look at all of those things. So these are really important, right? Now, before we go into a little bit on uh, what what are the things that we need for governance, I want to first tell you that there are differences when it comes to AI agents and agentic AI. I'm not a big fan of differentiating this, but there is already a research paper out there that says there's a difference between agentic AI and AI agent, of course, because agentic AI has more autonomy. That's how I define this. Uh, AI agents still has limited autonomy. We set some instruction. It has a defined process that it has to follow. And then based on those instruction and set processes, it executes a task for you. That's what AI agents, right? But agentic AI is a multi-purpose system, has higher autonomy, uh, can do, of course, uh self-supervision like they can supervise themselves you don't need a direct or a human supervision or something like that self-supervision means that they can uh, figure out 
within themselves that right? to so self supervision and of course persistent memory complex reasoning we can still do that in ai agents also you know if required because those are more of a but memory is more of a how we do databases and how do we uh, use caching and so on and so forth to de to design that but there is difference between agentic ai that's why i'm using the word agentic ai and not ai agents okay so keep this in mind okay now this governance is a bit different as i said right multiple agents you have memories you have autonomy you have chaining and so on and so forth so this is a this is a learning curve that you see initiate build deploy monitor and adapt so i'll just quickly pass through this because i already have created a notion template that i want to show you uh, how we can uh, you know use that let me just go back i also was creating on a simple ui to kind of walk you through like what are the things that we need right let's say we are building multiple agents so let me show that to you here you can see i am on google collab right and i have been using something called agent ops so agent ops if you don't know agent ops agent ops is a tool that helps you with build uh, that helps you build reliable ai agents that helps you uh, you know do trace debug and deploy that's not the only tool in the market we have open source llm tool you know uh, arigi ai phoenix that is something that we can also use we have galileo ai that's also really good that we can also use it there is also other open source tools that we can use it so there are agent ops there is galileo ai there is phoenix now all of these tools comes under ops part of it you know earlier we used to work with ml ops from ml ops we have seen llm ops from LLM, llm ops now we are talking about agent ops so you're going to talk about all these ops part let's see how it works right so if you look at here i am using agent ops api keys because they give you an api to access it on their dashboard so you can see uh, I, uh let me just show you this traces you can see it over here now i have a project running on uh agent as tool patterns you can see it over here you know agent as tools so simply i what i did first i installed uh agent ops and I'm using OpenAI Agents SDK uh, to build it. Uh, these are two things I need. So I have installed it. Of course, this GitHub repository, uh, this Collab uh, notebook will be available to you in the description. And then I set up my API keys over here. You can see from secrets, I'm on Google Collab. And then first thing is I have specialized translation agents. You can see I have a Spanish agent that basically translates an English message to Spanish. Then I have English to French, and then I have English to Italian. And then there's an orchestration orchestrator agent that orchestrates all of it as a uh, use tools or so on and so forth you can see it over here the last one is a synthesizer agent that correct them if there is anything needed and then it runs the code and it gives you an output here you can see now if you are running it you need some kind of telemetry to come in uh, not simple telemetry but advanced telemetry so if you look at here right uh, I, here I, if I click on this here it shows you a lot of things uh, it shows which model I am using. So I'm using GPT 4.0. What was the duration? So it shows you latency as well. It gives you total cost as well. That you see it over here. It gives you LLM calls. It gives you tool calls. How many tools it has? You know, uh, called uh, LLMs, total tokens. If there's any error. So these are really important for you to kind of get these things done. So if you look at here, a waterfall view here. You know, uh, that shows uh, everything. That shows for this translate to Spanish, what were the total prompt tokens used, completion tokens used. You can see the raw JSON for everything, all the parameters, you know, the durations, the status code. So you can do better logging and monitoring, you know, so far uh, with this. We can find out all the agents. So you can see we have orchestrator agent, we have Spanish agent, French agent, and everything. So it gives you a very good dashboard. Now we can also build our custom dashboard using this uh, through the same API. You can also export the trace here as a JSON. So when you click on this, it opens it uh, as a JSON. You can export this. Now it also has an inbuilt terminal logs that shows you what are the things happening. Uh, we can look at this tree view. It gives you a tree view in the order the way it has called. So you have a session that has initiated, or and you can see from top to bottom what we have done. So this is one example of how we can you know uh, use as an ops tool first of all. And this might not be enough for governance because I want to show you. Uh, I created a very good notion template uh, for ai governance framework that i have been working on that based on 
a lot of other framework that exist from data iq from gartner from mckinsey's of the world and then i put my own perspective with the help of other you know domain experts and i have compiled a very good framework for you i'll show you that in a bit but you can see it over here that we are running a flow based a deterministic flow pattern and if you keep going there are to force also sometimes we force agents to use particular tools gartner so this is very comprehensive notebook for you to try it out and monitor everything uh, on this dashboard basically you know that the dashboard that you see okay let me just go back here and let's come back here right yeah as uh, you can see this thing has run you can again click from here also to just go back to this new trace right and you can see it took more time 30.25 seconds so half of minute uh and llm calls and total tokens and so on and so forth right so different agent that it has used if you click on tree view it shows the tree views you can ex uh, excuse me you can find out everything over here fantastic so this is one of the tool agent ops same goes with other tools you can try it out as well now let me come back to this the governance uh, part that i've been working on right now this will be available this is like i've been building on lovable so not really fancy but here is what I have been doing. I've been working with in partnership with other collaborators to create this agentic AI governance and risk management tool uh, that we call it. It basically gives you a really good template. It's an editable template. It also has a lot of examples for you to understand how it really works, right? So you can see that if you're working on it, you need a governance board for all your agents because not all the agents will be successful, right? So you have to reject few agent also. You have to reject, you have to retire, just like how in the IT industry, HR does the job of human resources or human management, right? The same way we have to do it for agents also. Uh, if you are building an autonomous agents company, let's say in future, you can see pending, approved. Uh, this is a project governance board. Then we have feasibility checklist. Is your data available? Let's say we're working on a uh, agentic AI project. Is your infrastructure ready? So what is the status of it? You can put your notes cross-functional collaborations we need different domains and experts and SMEs and so on and so forth technical feasibility do do you have your team ready you know to work on it what kind of budgets do you have so budget allocation regulatory sensitivity because each continent and countries have their own regulations now Europe you have different regulations in North America you have different regulations in in uh, Southeast Asia we have our own regulations right Agent orchestration complexity, how complex the orchestration part is, right? If it's a multi-agent system, it will be really complex. So feasibility checklist table. And of course, you can keep on adding your own if you want to bring your own, uh, you know, customization over here in this template. Now we have a stakeholder alignment table and all these are, uh, you know, DIY, you can fill yourself. Then we go to life cycle management. You can see approval tracker. So uh, feasibility will be uh, given by AI governance officer or ethics AI officer. Head of product will do the project charter. The deployment will be done by risk officer. Hand handoff will, have, will be seen by compliance lead, so on and so forth. Then we have different agents. Whenever we are building agents, right, in enterprise, you also have to do agent registry. Like the way we used to work with GitHub projects, right, where you do versioning of your source code, right, we have to do the same way for agents. That's why we have agent ID. We have their functions, their inputs, the outputs, how will the output look like, how will the inputs look like, the memory handling, is it a temporary memory, is it a session-based memory, is it a persistent memory, is it a short-term context, is it a long-term context, so on and so forth. Then explainability level, what kind of explainability algorithms we are using? Because we cannot use the same algorithm that we used to use for classifications or prediction models, right? So we have to create our own custom explainable algorithms if we can explain it's difficult to explain to be honest now we have versioning log as i said right which versions when do we push that to prod right change summary what what did the thing we changed authors reviewer their approvals then role-based access controls few agents will have few agents few uh data parts or components or documents you know will be accessed by uh people who have specific roles like data scientist, governance lead, agent developer, so on and so forth. Let's say an agent developer will only work on developing agents, you know, the build and debug part. The governance lead will only look at the approval and audit part. The inference uh, layer will be, not inference layer, the data scientist will only look at the 
viewer experiment part. So you can see it over here. Then we have PIP policy enforcement. So PIP is really important, right? Inference layer, you need a token limiting policies. Memory layer, you need data retention policies. How many previous contexts you want to keep in your memory? Let's say if you are building access layer, you need user permissions. So we have policy enforcement points. Then we have different assumptions and constraint registry that comes up. Now then after the third point, which is responsible agentic AI toolkit that you see, where we talk about bias and fairness audits. You can see, let's say if you're working with data sets which have uh, which have personal information, which have demographics information, right? How do we handle age, the gender bias, the location biases, right? So on and so forth. So we have that as well. What kind of tools to use? So you can use fair, learn, what if, equitous, those tools. Then we have model disparity detector, uh, fairness metrics, when to trigger an audit. So to trigger an audit when TPR or FPR gap is greater than 0 0.1. What kind of tools you can use? Then in explainability, I told you prompt tracing, you know, we have Langchain debugging handlers. We have for output classifications, we have SAP and DALEX, uh, if there's some that explains classification scores. Then we have open AI middleware for real time uh, explanations. Then for feedback, we can use databases like Superbase and so on and so forth. Then how do we evaluate uh, goal misalignment checker? Then we have performance equity heat maps. Then we have ethics brave. Then we have data uses ethics checklist everything right you see it's a very comprehensive framework guys for you right and i think this is something that you can try it out have a look uh kpi dashboard so we have compliance scorecard we have ttm time to mitigations for a sla like let's say explainability and transparency index agent collaboration effectiveness roi versus risk if risk is more roi is less why would i work on that right until it's a very cutting edge innovation because innovation you might not always have the roi uh, but Immediate, I will say, in future you might have. So ROI versus risk curve. Then we have an audit and compliance kit for self audit checklist if you want to do something like so data consent, agent coverage, drift monitoring, and so on and so forth. Then we have DPIA template, which is based on agentic AI projects, uh, not that simple GDPR and stuff. So DPIA template, we have all of these. So as you can see, this is really comprehensive, right? Uh, and we're gonna also have some updates on this. I'm taking some help from people who does audits, uh, ISO, etc., and that will be really helpful. But yeah, these are these are really important, guys. If you really want to uh, make a deeper understanding, uh, please go through it and let me know your feedbacks and thoughts. And how are you solving the AI governance thing? Do you have an AI governance strategy uh, at place? uh in your in your organization and if you have any question thoughts or feedback let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channel find those information on channel banner and channel about us also look at the description where we have uh really uh well curated artifacts on ai agents and agentic ai we have learning roadmaps we have use cases selection framework we have success framework we have governance and risk management toolkit and we also have a bundle of all of this right so if you want please check that out and uh, if you like the video please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do subscribe to the channel guys and i hope you learned a little bit about ai governance right identity ai governance uh that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next one